It's the professional MasterChef semi-finals. Last time, the knockouts reduced 12 chefs down to the best eight. Now they will be split up and sent to cook for some of the most inspirational chefs in the country. So this is where it really hits. You need okay. to really knuckle down, yeah? yeah? Good start, good solid start. I'm impressed. Then they will cook off against each other for a place in the finals. Outstanding. Absolutely brilliant. First up, it's 34-year-old sous chef Mark from London and 25-year-old junior sous chef Dean from Wiltshire. Obviously, I just want to keep pushing, keep going. Hopefully, I get all the way to the final. I need to stay focused and get my head down and just crack on. It's getting really, really difficult now. The competition's taken over my life. I've gone through every emotion you could possibly imagine. I don't know how my fiance is coping with me at the moment. I'm just a bag of nerves all the time. It's really, really tough. I'm not going to lie about it, but it's, it's an incredible competition. Marcus, it is now our semi-final week, and it is getting very exciting. It's 8 a.m., and Dean and Mark are on their way to the village of Sparkwell in Devon. I've had a couple of thoughts about where we're going. And I really hope it is the place I'm thinking. I mean, I've got a few nerves in there, but I know when I get there, I'll be really excited, I'm really up for it. Yeah, I'm feeling all right. A bit anxious to know where we're going. It's a bit nerve-wracking. Today, they'll be working alongside a chef who has achieved the accolade they're both fighting for. In 2012, along with fellow contestant Kerry Moss, and Tom Petrosky was crowned professional MasterChef champion. The guy is brilliant. Everything he touches and puts on the plate not only looks great, but it tastes great, and it's also challenging. It's pushing the barriers. A year before he won the champion's title, Anton and his wife opened up a restaurant in the village where he grew up. We built this kind of derelict pub into something that we wanted. We ended up no money left at all. I think we had 55 quid. Last year, it was awarded its first Michelin star and has just been voted Country Dining Pub of the Year. Every chef dreams of getting a Michelin star and, you know, you, you push really hard for it. This year it came along. I just bored out in tears, like, properly broke down in tears. And look, those tears that you can't catch your breath, it's like proper emotional tears. My food follows the garden and the earth. What's growing at the time is what you put on the plate. The style of food is British boozer with a weird little touch to it. A dory and a duck, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Master played a massive role in my life. Changed me as a person. You become more confident in yourself. I could tell you probably every day of Master if that was on it. An amazing experience. I think the journey those guys are going to have is something that they'll cherish for the rest of their life. Hey guys, how you doing? How you doing? Welcome doing? to Devon. Welcome Thank to Truby Arms. You've got some dishes on the menu today that you're going to be cooking that are very close to my heart. You may come from different styles of kitchens, but mine is about being chilled out and very enjoying the food and making sure that when you cook something, you love what you do, and that's all, all I ask for. You've got a bit of a day ahead of you. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I know exactly how you're feeling. You're going to get some teas on, then we can crack on with service. I feel great that we're cooking, yeah. Anton's given, like, a lot of chefs a lot of inspiration. Every dream is possible. He's been in our shoes, so he knows what we're going through. But I'm not sure if your cut's any slack. I think he's still got to hit his standards. 
a Michelin star gastro pub is something that I've wanted for a while. Anton is an inspiration, really. To have gone from winning the competition to now having his own Michelin star is 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 something to be inspired by, and uh, and you know I just hope I can do the same. <laughs> During service, Dean will make Anton's starter of scallops topped with burnt apple and lemon balm purees, pickled onion gel and lobster powder. The scallops are on brown shrimps, cockles and clams, mixed with compressed cucumber, pickled samphire and a citrus dressing. It's finished with edible flowers. So we're going to start by um, just giving this 20 seconds in the Komodo. And it is just 20 seconds. Then we're going to cover it in a little bit of oil. We get some lovely hand dive scallops from the Isle of Skye, and it's a very personal friend that dives them for us as well. So they're perfectly selected. Dry ice put into the bottom. We've got the seaweed to sit on top. And this will really give a perfume when you smell it. Here, you've got some um, of the brown shrimps and a little bit of cucumber. And we've got a citrus dressing. It's just a little hint. I'm just going to pour these into the middle. So next, you're going to put some pickled samphire. Once it's pickled, you've got about an hour and a half before it kind of starts to die. And respect it as well. You know, someone's gone out and foraged it. And everything on here is just as important as the scallop. We're not just talking about the scallop. We're talking about the whole, the whole bed of the sea. But yeah. Then we're just going to blowtorch the scallop. Get a nice colour all the way around. But when you've got 10 on, and you're plating this without anyone helping you. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. But that's what we do with chefs, don't we? Right, you've got a little dot of burnt apple puree. You've got the pickled onion flinger. You can't really muck around too much with the scallop. We've got some uh, pickled onion gel. And if you get too much on the, the scallop and it's over smoked, then we have to start the game. Yeah, it is difficult. And these are all picked in the morning from our allotment. So about four or five of those on top. When you use your, your fingers, try not to bruise the flowers or anything. We've got some lobster powder. It's really sweet, so it really balances out with all the other bits that are on there. In this pan, we're going to bring up some kelp water. It's made with, like, seven different seaweeds. Then you get the feet of the table. Obviously, that will go out. And when you get it and everyone's sat at the table, you obviously get that smell. It is really the smell of the sweet yeah. sea on an ocean bed. You're probably going to do about 40 of these today, and it's going to be fast and quick, you know. The service is probably be at 45 minutes. But we'll get through it, and you'll do it. It'll be fine. Just be happy, mate, and enjoy it. We'll do it. Do you think you're OK doing that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's, it's a little bit fiddly, but I think hopefully I should be able to manage it. Good luck, dude. Thank Let's, you. Uh, crack on and get service going. It's absolutely incredible. It brings back that childhood memories of, like, cockles on the beach and... The smell, the aroma, everything just works so well. Amazing, like, speechless. Mark will be in charge of the main. A Cajun spiced goat loin served with a goat samosa and Chilean coriander black eyed beans. It's garnished with an aubergine puree, glazed apricots, and charred lettuce. The sauce is a goat reduction. We've got some locally bred goat. It's using a product and showing people a product that is not really used that much in this country, but we're in abundance of it. And that's what we're all about, supporting stuff that's really kind of sustainable. It's a kid loin. It's a little bit tougher than lamb, so we don't keep it too pink, just go a little bit over. It's a lot of to do with feel and touch. You can get the thermometer out and check it with the thermometer when you want to get to that. It's perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, but old school's the new school for me as well, you know. Yep. Touch and feel and understanding the product's the most important thing, dudes. We're going to start by coating the loin in Cajun seasoning. It's a very 80s kind of style of seasoning, but it's a season that I really like for, you know, lamb and, and goat. Get it in. So you want some rosemary, garden thyme, and we've got some lemon thyme as well. See, that's got a crust on it now. Yeah. That's about as far as you want to take it before it burns. When, if it does burn, we will have to start again and we'll get another loin on. Yeah. And keep moving it all the time. Don't be shy just to move it. You can shake the pan if you want. You rock it how you want to rock it, mate. How you feel comfortable cooking, you cook it. Okay. And then we're going to give it three minutes in the oven at 180. 
While that's in the oven, you've got some chilli and some coriander. Here you've got the black-eyed peas. OK. If they split, we've got to start again. OK. The goat sauce, that gets passed and that gets brought up onto the pass. We've got some blended demerara sugar. Apricots go really well with this spice as well. They give a real nice richness to it. So we've got the samosas here. And if you just drop that in the fryer just to get crisped up for a minute. Just want to get the goat out. It'll feel a little bit tense now to the touch, but that is a tense meat even, even when it's yeah. raw as well. While that's resting, now we're going to start thinking about building. You want to char the stem. It's just going to soften the bit that's really hard. So we've got some of the black-eyed beans here. Getting that dish completely right is all about seasoning, making sure it's fresh, but it's all shouting about that goat. Gently place one bit going that way, one bit going this way. So you'll cover the dish completely, like a little blanket. It's kind of like the goat, you know, the goat will be hid underneath a blanket of hay, and we've kind of hid it in that way that it's, it's a big surprise. My mum will know if this is right, because she, you know, she loves this dish. Oh, OK. Put some skin. <laughs> good? It's sensational. Yeah, outrageously good. The goat is so tender. So you're going to get about 40 of those, and it'll probably be quite rapid. It'll be quite fast-paced for the table. It'll be like 10, 6, 4, 10, 6, 4, 2, 2. We're going to rock it out. Thank you. I'm really, really excited. Yeah, it's a beautiful dish. I love the idea of the little covering as a surprise, so you can just open it up and see some amazing food. It's not going to be easy, but this is why we're here. Really, I'm really looking forward to it. Just test myself. The restaurant is fully booked, and many of the customers are regulars with high expectations. These dishes that are on the taster menu are very close to my family. And my mum worked here for the first two years, and my wife, she was a Mitch inspector, worst Mitch inspector you could ever get to turn up to your restaurant. Yeah, she is harsh. Being a Michelin starred establishment, you know, we've got high expectations. Are you ready, guys? We're going to get hit in a minute. It's going to be fast and quick. They've got to crack on, and we've got a busy lunch. They've got a lot to do and a lot of things to get right. I said I wasn't going to be nervous. I'm... Eat, eat in myself. Yeah, no, it's good. It's awesome. It's, it's nerve-wracking because you don't know who's sat outside, but I obviously know my mum's out there, and she'll tell me if it was loud or not. <laughs> Samara's taste of a four, guys. Four scallop, four goat, four crab, four strawberry and a carrot. Chef, chef. Plus taste of a six. Chef, chef. chef. The pressure's now on for Dean to get all the starters out. So we got a six and a four, dude. We'll do this together, so do it as a ten. OK. So if you get ten scallops up, oh, it's rocking. Ooh. And then come over, just 20 seconds in there, Dave. So thanks, 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 thanks. A little bit more on here. It really needs a little bit of colour to get the heat into the inside. OK, nice. You can keep them moving on the tray, because the tray kind of keeps it warm for you. Okay. It's like a, like a little hot plate, really, so you don't have to worry about it dropping in temperature or anything. Chef, do you want to just taste them? Yeah, yeah, let's have a little look. Yeah, nice. On the pass. So, guys, we're going to go on four scallops. Well done, Dean. Thanks, Look chef. awesome, mate. Bang on. Seasoned perfectly. You know, it's cooked perfectly. I wouldn't send it if I didn't think it was perfect. So, you know, he's doing really well. Just sent the first table of four. And I've got a table of uh, six and a table of two on order as well. In a minute, we'll come up on ten with ten goat together, all right, Dave? Yes, sure. Once they give us a warning on them, we'll start playing them out. Yes, sure. I just want to get the first check on. Just want to get the first goat cooked and rested, and then uh, everything, will, everything will be fine from there. So this is going for my mum's table, guys. 
shit. Keep it up. You're a natural Dean. Manic. It's uh, different. It's different to what I'm used to. You all right? Everything's good? You are happy? Doing really well, mate. Enjoying it? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good? It's fun. It's just uh, getting used to it. Yeah, it's getting used to it. It's new dishes as well, isn't it? It's always a little bit. Anton must have really trained them well this morning because I couldn't have told the difference. It was really, really good. Delicious. The Scots are beautiful. Yeah. That's what we say in Devon. <laughs> happy food, happy chefs, happy customers. We're going to go on that as 10 goat as well, all right, dude? Yes, sure. The focus is now on Mark, who suddenly has orders in for two tables at once, one for six, and the other for four. No pressure. Just remember about the pan as well, moving them around all the time. If we get everything else lined up. Yes, sure. Uh, get the samosas down. You all good? Yes, sure. That's all we need to hear. Mark must make sure that each element matches the style and taste of Anton's multi-award winning food. Looking good, mate? Yes, chef. Backs. Right. We're going to crack on with the puree. Yep, sure, sir. In the plate. You can look at me if you want to be cool, or you can just do it how you feel. How you, yeah. <laughs> That's it, mate. Well done. Throwing in the house, Yeah, looking good, dude. Chef. Nice and fast. Don't forget at the end, we can wipe around the edges and clean up where we've made mess and stuff like that as well. Yes, sir. Perfect. Bang on, mate. Let's get them put up. Yeah, it's looking nice. Need to push it on now. Need to start going. Yeah? For sure. Looking really nice, Mark. I'm sure. Looks like you've been in the kitchen with us for years. <laughs> That's lovely. Nice work, Mark. Nice work. This is a spiced Cajun goat. It smells lovely. I think the dish was very well presented and very well cooked. The actual goat was very tender, very nice indeed. I would order that dish again, yes. Very happy, mate. That's a lot of people here, yeah? Yeah. It never happens like that, so you've done really well, dude. That's why. <laughs> Plates in that many for once is always going to be quite intense, but when, you, when you've got his reputation on the hold, then, you know, you need to make sure that everything's absolutely perfect. I was a little bit shaky, to be honest, because it's the first one, but I have a good understanding of how he wants it to look, so I just need to make sure I remember that every time I go in. I know how these guys are feeling, you know? They're thinking, I've got to get this dish done, but I've got to talk to you, and I've got to kind of do everything as well, so... It's, it's, a hard, it's a hard situation. With service in full swing, the orders for both chefs are showing no signs of slowing down. Check on! Free scallops, free goat, free crab. The yes, chef. Let's push it out now, dude. We need to start going. Yes, sir. You need some more seaweed? Yes, sir. Right, some more seaweed. Press A, please. Our season, dude. A little bit more lemon, dude. Look good, mate. Really, really good. Guys, we're going on a two and a three scallops, okay? I'm going on the two scallops. Table chef. bar 101 and table 13. Oh, right, good work, mate. It's awesome, buddy, yeah? Thank you very much, dude. Oh, it's amazing, I absolutely love it. It's really refreshing, it's just it's got so many flavours, and it's really nice. Even though service is coming to a close, there's no let up for Mark, who gets another big order. I've got six more to go in the frying pan now. Uh, I'll get six more garnish on, and then uh, eight. eight, yep. So I've got eight now. Exactly the same as we've done last time, mate. Yes, yeah, sure. 
Try and pick them out so they're all very similar in shape and size. Yes, chef. Yeah? How many have we got there? Six. Six, I reckon you'll get them all in, dude. Yeah? Yeah, go for it. Remember about moving them around, dude, as well, so they take all the flavour from the pan, yeah? Yes, chef. Probably say three minutes on those. Awesome. You know, he's cooking everything perfectly. Speed's a little bit of a thing, but he's doing big tables. You know, we're doing eights, and that doesn't happen here at all. Normally, it's twos and fours. Apricots on, samosas down? Yeah, they're coming now, Chef. Lovely. You all good? You all good there, Mark? Yes, Chef. That's it, mate. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's cover up the goat and send it. Looking really nice, Mark. The final seal of approval must come from the all-important diners. So I've just had the um, Cajun goat, and it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, I haven't had anything from the family, so that's a good thing, you know. I think Mum or the wife would have been up in the past saying, you're missing this, you haven't done that. <laughs> that's the last two checks on, guys. Let's make sure everything's perfect. You're doing really well, guys. I'm really happy. Finally, it's Dean's last push. Just finishing off service now. Obviously, just want to make sure the last table goes as good as the first. Let's push it out and let's uh, leave with happy thoughts. Sure. Well done, dude. Thanks, really sure. appreciate it, mate. You've done really well. Your last check, dude, so let's rock yeah. it, mate. Nearly through it. But you're only as good as your last dish. Service, please. Well done, mate. It's awesome. Thank really you. well done. Really enjoyed, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it? <laughs> yeah. did, yeah? Amazing, yeah. That's nah, cool. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. It's always a good feeling when you finish the service and you're all buzzed up and you've served amazing food. You know, there's no, no better feeling, really. Yeah, feel great. It's great. I love being in the kitchen. And obviously, the competition is all about individuals, but like, there's nothing that makes me more happier than being part of a team. Mark and Dean now have one more chance to impress Anton. They will have to cook one of his signature dishes, which was a triumph on professional MasterChef. Pigeon Wellington. His version has the pigeon breast, pigeon liver duck cell, and spinach wrapped in parma ham and phyllo pastry. It's served with girole mushrooms, a bubble and squeak croquette, a sous vide cooked pigeon leg, caramelized cauliflower puree, and a pigeon jus. My signature dish is very, very close to me. It's just something that shouts out about the pigeon. How the pigeon was shot, the ash resembles the shot, the puree resembles the mud falling out, and the pigeon is the heart and soul. It's a respect in the, the ingredients. So they've got the pigeon wellington, obviously, to make. And then they've got to do the bubble and squeak. They have to get that really nice and crispy. We serve the cloth. It's all edible as well. It's not just for decoration. And the sauce is really important because it gets finished with a local apple juice. So if they don't use it, there won't be the acidity. It'll just be very clammy on the back of the tongue. I really like my artistic kind of style, but it'd be nice to see how they interpret my dish. I'll be able to see them as a chef. It's not often you get to go into a Michelin star kitchen and replicate someone's dish. It's a great honor to be able to do it. I 
That looks amazing. The quee salt and the pigeons, absolutely bang on. And the seasoning in the bubble and squeaks really nice. And the little liver gives a nice little note to it as well. And the legs nice and soft. Sauce is bang on. We'll check for acidity. That brings the dish all together. Just the feeling needs to be a little bit more crispy. Yeah. It's not as if it's ruined the dish at all. It's just, just would have had a little bit of more crunch to it. Yeah. Really happy. Thank you. Very sir. happy, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to say it's been a real inspiration coming here today. I think your food's amazing, and what you've done since the show, well, yeah, it's just been incredible. And I really hope I can do something much similar to you. No, oh, thank you. It's so it makes me very humble. Yeah, thank you very much. Anton seemed to enjoy the dish. I mean, it's incredible. It's just great to hear a Michelin star chef comment on the way that your food tastes, the way it's cooked. I feel overwhelmed, to be honest. It's something that I've never done before, so hopefully I can do it a little bit of justice. It's nerve-wracking, especially as it's his dish. As long as he's happy and it delivers on flavour, then I'll be happy. Are you happy with it? Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. No, you should be, mate. It looks awesome. Really nice, lovely presentation. Proofs in the pudding. I didn't think at first the pigeon crust was going to be as crispy as I thought. It looks a little bit under the pastry, but when you actually get into it, it's really nice and crispy. The mushrooms are really nicely seasoned. The leg's awesome. You've got the sauce. Bang on as well, it's nice and sticky. I love the way you glaze the liver as well. Really lovely plate of food. Thank I'll you. be happy to serve that in here. Thank you. It's not easy at all, you know, and you've walked in someone else's kitchen for not very long and, you know, I'd happily employ you, mate. You're, you're a solid chef. I'm gonna take you up on that. Cheers, Enjoy. thank you. Good luck, buddy. Take thank care, you. mate. Cheers. Anton said he loved the dish. He said he'd more than happily serve it. I'm extremely chuffed. Unreal, like, just coming here for a day, he thought you, I could learn so much. It's been, it's been an incredible experience, and it's, it's one I'll, I'll, I'll remember and cherish forever. Yeah, I come in the end of my service at the Hand and Flowers and just feeling utterly exhausted. Emotions and pressure, the nerves. The boys done really well, really, really proud of them. Today's been amazing, the experience has been unreal. It's something I think I'll cherish probably for the rest of my days. It's hard not to feel confident if you go into a Michelin kitchen and you, you know, you have a really exciting day. I just need to take what I've learned today into the next round. 100% have those two guys back in the kitchen. If they want to stay in tonight and do service, I'll go out. <laughs>
you've had a taster of what that future could be. And I wish you the best of luck. This is it. Two dishes between you and a place in finals week. One hour, 45 minutes. Off you go. It's going to have to be good. This is where it gets very, very tough. And the heat in this kitchen is going to be immense. Cooking against Mark is probably going to be the most nerve-wracking stage of this uh, competition. I know my dishes are good. Hopefully, they'll triumph over his, but I know that it's not going to be an easy day. Fingers crossed, I can pull it out of the bag. How are you, Dean? Yeah, I'm good. I know it's a big day today, so I'm just trying to make sure I stay focused, get everything done today. How was it away with, with Anton? It was a great inspiration just to see how happy he was all the time and stuff like that. It was, it was really inspiring. Anton's always been happy, from what I can remember. He just said to make sure like, we stay true to ourselves. He's like, you can't be someone else. He said you have to be the chef who you are and who you believe in, and that's what will drive you forward. So you feel inspired? I, I do. I feel really inspired. That's really good to hear. Really good. So, what are you going to be cooking? Charred duck breast and um, charred carrots with naves, mandarin, and a, uh, like a duck and sesame sauce. And for dessert, I'm doing a pineapple panna cotta. Pine nut. Pine, pine nut. With a uh, pine nut and orange cake, orange curd, orange granita, orange jelly, but a fresh orange as well. Okay, wow. Where's the inspiration for these two dishes come from? These two dishes are both like, like great flavours, like especially the duck, duck and mandarin are great mm. flavours. They work absolutely wonderful together. And then having the charness and stuff, it all just works really well. I think the charred carrots, charred charred duck is just unreal. The sesame sauce just to lift it up, like pine nut and a panna cotta. It works so well, the, the, the oiliness of the nut and everything just comes through and it's, it's truly like wonderful. You're actually talking with a sense of real passion here. This is quite a new Dean I'm looking at right now. I think I've lacked a little bit of confidence. I can cook and I've, I've just been more worried and panicky and I've always been hate what people think of me and like if, if somebody doesn't like a dish I've always been a bit panicky and I've always hated criticism. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. You hate criticism. Well, as long as it's constructive. You've come, right? you come to the wrong place if you, come, if you don't like you criticism. <laughs> as long as it's um, constructive criticism. I suppose the key question is, are these two dishes good enough to get you into finals week? <laughs> if I nail these dishes on the head, I think they are. How do you feel, Dean, going up head-to-head -head against Mark? It's me versus him today, and it's, I'd hate to call the shot. I'd hate to be in your guy's shoes today. He's confident. He's happy, he believes in himself, he believes in the food that he's cooking today. He's cooking for us main course of duck. He's rendering the fat down gently. He's then going to cook it in a water bath. He's taking some of that fat that he's rendered it down and he's putting it into the bag. So it's going to comfy gently while it's cooking it. It should be lovely and pink. Serving it with carrot puree, baby turnips. There's also going to be a mandarin gel as well. I also saw him chopping up the duck bones and a little bit of the leg meat as well to make the sauce. It's going to have a flavour of sesame, but also the orange going through it as well. This is a dish that's got a lot of things going on from a flavour point of view. But the key question is going to be, do they come together and do they work? On the whole, I love the sound of this main course. But today, there is nowhere to hide. And it's great to see the confidence in Dean, because a confident chef should be cooking at his best. I do like the sound of pine nut panna cotta. going to slightly roast the pine nuts and infuse into the panna cotta milk. Sounds fabulous. We want that wobble factor. The wobble has got to be there. He's serving it with a cake. It's gluten free. It's made from almond powder, pine nuts and polenta. So it will be a very dense cake. That's fine as long as it remains moist. He's serving it with granite of orange, orange curd, 
I really do like the sound of this dish. Duck followed by an orange dessert. That, for me, works very well. For my dessert, there's a lot of skill, there's a lot of elements of the dish and there's a lot of timing. Like, there's a lot of things that could go wrong. Hopefully today, nothing's gonna go wrong and I'll nail everything on the head. Chefs, you've got one hour left. Dean's a very good chef. Absolutely no question of that. I'm just gonna try and block him out completely. If I show any sign of weakness today or make one slip up, then the chances are he won't do that. I'm confident with my dishes. If I execute them properly today, then I'll be laughing. Welcome back. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, really good. How was your time away with Anton? You know that feeling when you finish service and you, you know, you've worked as a team and you've done some amazing food, it's, you can't beat that feeling. But he's also been here and done this. <laughs> well, this is, this is the great thing about being in his kitchen. He knew everything about how, what we were going through. I was stood at one stage, like, rocking in the kitchen, and he just said, yeah, I've been, I, I did that as well. <laughs> you know, there was, there was lots of stuff that he kind of related to with, in, in us. What have you stolen from his kitchen? I've, I've stolen two components, actually, which are on my main course, but don't tell him. <laughs> You're two plates away from the MasterChef finals. How much does that really mean to you now? Well, now you've made me nervous, so... But, yeah, no, it, it, means, it means the world. It means the world. Really, really, really want it. MasterChef... Finals. <laughs> I know, it sounds... It, it, to, to even have heard those words when I first started, would have just, I, I wouldn't have even understood it, but... Yeah, you're I mean. almost there. Tell us a bit about the food that you're cooking today. OK, so I'm doing a pan-seared cod with scallop and squid ink tortellini. Um, I'm doing some sea vegetables, pickled samphire. What about your pudding? I'm going with an elderflower and buttermilk panna cotta with poached strawberries, Szechuan pepper shortbread and basil sorbet. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Mm. You do know that uh, Dean across the way there is also making a panna cotta. I do, yeah. But Dean has a twist on, on his. Yeah. I'm curious which one is going to be better. So am I. <laughs> Only one of them is going to go through. I know, I know. <laughs> I hope it's mine. Let the battle of the panna yeah. cottas begin. <laughs> Mark has been away and has come back equally as inspired by working with Anton, which is great to see. Mark's menu sounds fabulous. Two great sounding dishes again. Mark's main course is cod fillet. It's a lovely piece of fish. It's very meaty, it's quite thick. It can take big, bold flavours. He's also made a squid ink pasta. come out to a nice black squiddy colour. Looks fabulous. He's going to be filling that with the scallop mousse. The thickness of the pasta is very, very important. He's got to get the balance right. He also has crispy squid. He's making a vermifolute and he's going to add some diced squid through that as well. It's a lovely sounding dish. I just hope Mark can be able to control himself and it doesn't rush through and ruin this. Speak of the devil. <laughs> Absolutely love this dish, but it just needs to be executed properly. There's so many things that could potentially not work. This is a real showstopper dish. I really feel like this is going to wow the judges. I love it, so, you know, I just need to hope that Marcus and Monica love it. Mark, curiously, is making a panna cotta as well. Panna cotta made with buttermilk is a fabulous combination. The buttermilk has a lovely, rich acidity to it that I think is fabulous and will work great with this dish. There's also a basil sorbet. As well as a Szechuan pepper shortbread. And a strawberry jelly going with the panna cotta. 
I really want to try this dessert. It'll be really interesting to see which of the two does the better one. Because at the end of this, only one of these panna cottas is good enough to go through. I feel as though like I'm pushing myself with the whole menu. I just feel really energised. I feel like I'm going to smash it today. Mark, Dean, you have just 15 minutes left. Yes, Chef. Everything's actually gone really well to plan, I think. I'll find out in a minute. Um, obviously, last last few minutes just to plate up, finish finish everything off. Let's just hope I get it all on the plate. It's just basically getting the garnish together now. I've got a lot to do, so I'm just trying to uh, get focused on what it is I need to do and the right stages I need to do it at. There should be time set aside so they can really enjoy the plating of the food. That's when the art comes into this. They want to do themselves proud. The atmosphere in the kitchen is frantic. It's professional. These guys are here to fight two very evenly matched chefs. And it's all going to be down to the detail. Five minutes for that place in the finals week. One minute left. Oh, Mark, let's go. You've got to finish up now. Time's now up, Mark. And that's it? That's it. <sighs> well done, mate. Dean is pinning his hopes on a main course of charred duck breast served with charred baby carrots. Pickled carrots, carrot puree, and blanched baby neve, or turnips. It's finished with a mandarin gel and a duck and sesame oil sauce. That's gonna be one of the brightest duck dishes I've ever laid eyes <laughs> on. The duck is beautifully cooked. I like the duck, it's lovely and tender. You've rendered the fat down beautifully well. I love the carrot puree. That's nice and smooth and velvety. Really like the texture of the sauce. Really enjoyed the flavours of that as well. And the bite of the sesame. I really like that. That's quite unusual. I've not had it like that before. And I think it works very, very well. It's a very well-balanced dish, but the bite of the vegetables on the plate are slightly unexpected. There's just the crunch on the white turnip. There's a bitterness in that that sort of sits on the palate a little bit. A little bit too much for, for me. The sesame oil can be quite overpowering, but it's only a little bit coming through. And I love it with the sweetness and the sharpness of the carrot puree and the mandarin. But I, I have to agree with Marcus on this point that, you know, we find issues on a plate, though it's a great plate, just another a couple of minutes or a minute more of, of, of cooking. Um, I would eat it all nonetheless. <laughs> Thank you. Dean's dessert is a pine nut panna cotta with polenta and orange cake, orange curd, orange jelly, and lemon sorrel cress. It's garnished with crystallized pine nuts and orange granita. Dean, the dessert presentation, it looks absolutely lovely. A really stunning looking uh, dessert here.
the panna cotta is, is so delicate. And I love the pine nut on the top, the toasted pine nuts, I think really does bring the flavor out more. If it weren't there, I think it would be very bland. I love the curd, when you get bits of the curd in there and it's so sharp. And then the freshness of the granita. The cake is very moist, there's only hints of orange coming through that. It's a really tasty dessert. I'm always a bit dubious when there's a cream dessert with a sorbet, like a cream and an ice together. It, sometimes for me, and that's just a personal thing, doesn't work. But I think this works very, very well together. But the panna cotta feels like a set cream rather than a set milk and cream. It is very rich. It has a texture of creme brulee rather than the gelatinous of a panna cotta. I just wanted it to be maybe a little bit lighter. We are going to find the detail. We are splitting the hairs here. That's what our job is, and that's what we have to do. I feel intense. It feels like almost a relief off my shoulders. It's been a, a tough day. I'm fairly happy with some of the comments, but I'm going to be kicking myself about the negatives. It's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's just been the most funnest thing I've ever done, and I've enjoyed every moment, but hopefully, hopefully it won't be the end of the road. Mark has made pan-fried cod with scallop mousse tortellini, crispy squid, dehydrated scallop roe, and pickled samphire, finished with a vermouth fish sauce. I think from a presentation point of view, I'm surprised you actually got it on the plate. I don't mind a chef driving himself right to the end, but whew, you did take that to the wire today. Having said that, they still look like two very nice plates of food and two very detailed plates of food as well. Thank you, Chef. You drove yourself to the edge. <laughs> and over. Just don't go over it. <laughs> Mark, the first thing I tried was your sauce. And boy, did it smack you in the chops with uh, some great flavors and, and taste. And then the, the sharpness that's coming through. And it's also, it's not a, a heavy cream sauce, it's quite light. And, and this has been a really nice surprise on it. Love that sauce. I love the garnish of the sea vegetables with the crispy squid. And it's the sauce that brings it all together. And I love the color that you achieved on the, the tortellinis. <coughs> The idea of the dish for me is, is fantastic. Thank you. Mark, everything about your choice of ingredients and the marriage of the flavours together, without a doubt, work. I think the cooking of the fish is really well done. I love the colour on the top. I think the crispy squid has kept itself crispy and looks fabulous and tastes just as good. I think the sauce is delicious, absolutely divine. You use lots of fish bones. It tastes of a fish sauce. The vermouth sitting in the background, I always believe, is probably one of the best accompaniments for a white sauce with a fish. It's a brave attempt, Mark, and, you know, I admire that pushing right to the end there. You know, good job. Sure, sure. Mark's dessert is an elderflower and buttermilk panna cotta with sous vide poached strawberries and a strawberry jelly garnished with Szechuan pepper crumble a balsamic reduction, and pistachios, served with a basil sorbet. Colourful presentation, Mark. Very colourful. I like your choice of plate, but it really makes the dessert stand out even mm. more. Mark, an absolute spectacular dessert. Outstanding, absolutely brilliant. The texture of the panna cotta and the buttermilk is just divine. There's one thing that worries me when someone says they're gonna poach a beautiful English strawberry. It concerns me because the first thing it does is loses its color. Anything but, I mean, look at that, absolutely amazing color. 
but you've cooked it, you've got the texture, you've absolutely enhanced its own flavour, which is not an easy thing to do with the strawberry. The basil sorbet is fantastic. It works so well together. The jelly on the top, the basil herb, the panna cotta and the sorbet are, are just a match made in heaven. I like it a lot. That is just yummy. <laughs> I love this basil sorbet on its own. It's delicious. Mm. And then with this creamy panna cotta, the buttermilk, strawberries, the crumb, really yummy, really delicious. Yummy is my technical word for, for today. I love that you really did push yourself, you know, but what goes to show in this plate mm. of food is pure talent to get that amazing flavour on the plate. You've given us a tough job. Yeah, relieved, to be honest. I mean, the comments were, were amazing. I think they've got a tough decision. Yeah. <sighs> it was never going to be easy to go head to head with a friend. Thank you. We'll see you back here in a minute. Anything that they've learned from Anton is to be themselves, enjoy their cooking, and to be true to what they are. I think our chefs did just that. They both stepped it up. Some great cooking. And we have a serious judging on our hands. Dean, throughout the competition, has always been quite reserved. Today, he wouldn't stop talking, and his eyes lit up when he talked about his food. He was very well organised. The duck tasted good, the sauce was lovely, beautiful depth of flavour. One of my negative points is the baby turnip. The fact it was slightly undercooked. That's true, but I loved the way he cooked the duck. He had rendered it down, it was still crispy, wonderfully seasoned. The puree with the sauce together I thought was delicious. The problem I have with Dean's dessert, the panna cotta had more of a cooked creme brulee texture than a wobble of a panna cotta, but nonetheless, it still tasted good. I thought he executed a great dessert here. It was very creamy, but I'd forgive that. I would have eaten all of it. The question I'm going to ask myself is, did Dean push himself and give us enough excitement on the plate? It's probably the most scariest point in my life right now, just that, that moment of waiting just to find out. And I'd love to be a fly on the wall just, just to know, just a little bit. But I'm sure the, the, the moment of truth will come soon enough. Wow, where do we begin with Mark? Here's a chef who really has come into the kitchen fighting and driving himself. Timing went slightly over, but Mark did push himself and delivered us two plates of food. Mark's cod main course had a lot of elements that I really enjoyed. Number one being that sauce. Mm. I thought that was stunning. It was actually quite light and the vermouth sitting on the palate. I thought that was a great way to start a tasting. We had two panna cottas today. But I think the one that pipped it for me today was Mark's. Great flavour, great textures, beautifully executed. Mark's panna cotta is the one that I remember and the one that I prefer of the two. I never expected to get this far. And uh, to be here now and so close, yeah, it makes you want it. Obviously, I'd be devastated if I got knocked out. I don't know, and we'll just have to wait and see. I don't know what's going to happen. It could be anyone's game. There's only one place up for grabs today in finals week. We have two different chefs. What are we going to do? Today, our chefs really did come in and put up a great fight. I am going back and forth in my head. I'm going from one to the other and back to the other one. I'm sending this one home and now I'm sending that one home. This is really difficult. OK, I've got a question for you. Yes. Tomorrow you wake up and you want to go out for dinner. Whose menu would you want to eat again? Of these two <clears throat> chefs, whose menu would I? Well, I, I definitely have an answer to that.
this is quite a tough judging for us. We've had to really pick you apart and look at your strengths, your weaknesses. Everything has had to come into this judging for us. We can only take one of you through. And the chef that's going through to finals week is... Mark. Sorry, Dean. Dean, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I'm distraught. Just wish I maybe pushed a little bit more and tried a little bit harder, but obviously I can't. I can't do anything about it right now. Obviously, got in there, I go home, but it's been amazing. I've loved it every moment of it. Mark, congratulations. Well done. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Due to finals week. Really appreciate it. Oh, I can't believe it. Still shaking like a leaf. I didn't expect it, to be honest. Again, Dean's a really great competitor. He deserved just to go through just as much as I did. Literally trying my hardest in this competition. I've never taken my foot off the gas. And I'm just ecstatic. I can't even begin to tell you how, much, how good I feel. And it's just incredible. Incredible. Really, really happy. Next time, the semis continue. And three more chefs take on one of the country's most inspiring kitchens. Remember, we live and die by the clock. Communicate, OK? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Another one away now. Just carrying on. Back's walking with lamb. Come on, Darren. It's coming right now, chef. Mind your back. Coming out. They will then have to showcase their own talent if they want to stay in the competition. Another interesting and intriguing dish.